Okay, so the, uh, the next talk in this session uh, will be given by uh, Shan Kun Chen from Yahoo Research. Is it works now? Yeah, works. Okay, okay, so I think I have some wrong uh, issue with my head for anime. Sorry for the trouble. Um, this talk is, uh, I want to introduce our work on stochastic mixed span minimization in structure set system. Uh, this is joint work with Anupam, Amit, and Vishmanas. So, let me uh, start on um, this talk with uh, application of our work and then I will introduce the more general setting later. So consider the interval selection problem. Uh, in this problem, we are giving uh, n points, uh, n po sorry, n points on, on the line and uh, n intervals. Each interval will have a size associated with it and then we want to select t of the intervals uh, if we choose one interval in the solution, then it will induce the size of it on all the points it passes in the line. So the number to the left side of each interval is its size. And uh, in this example, we require to select four of them. So this is, uh, uh, okay. And then uh, the objective is to minimize the uh, maximum load on any points along the line. So in this example, this blue interval forms the optimal solution and the corresponding mixed span is four. So if the, uh, in this problem, if all the sides are uniform, then this um, problem can be solved in polynomial time because the corresponding LP relaxation has a uh, totally modular constant matrix. And uh, if uh, the size is arbitrary, then there is a, a constant approximation known. In our work, we consider the stochastic version of this problem. So still we have a line with uh, n points and uh, n intervals, but instead of the deterministic size, uh, each interval will have a random variable xj to describe its random size. Uh, so we change the number to a question mark here. And then the objective becomes to minimize the expected mixed band, which is shown here. Um, we also use this uh, LI to note that to present all the intervals that contain the point I. So for any given solution, the objective value expected mixed band is just the weighted sum of all the possible realizations from this solution. Let's me first describe Prep a naive approach to solve this problem. So one simple idea is since we are solving a stochastic problem, we just use the expected size as the uh, as a deterministic value and solve is that deterministic value. So we can form an LP relaxation with uh, expectation of X as deterministic size and then solve the LP use the deterministic algorithm. With churn of bound and union bound, it will give a log over log log M approximation. So, um, and uh, our mean result is we achieve a log log m approximation for this problem. And uh, also uh, it's a general framework that extends to other set system, for example, pass in tree, rectangle in plane, and uh, better objective in plane. Some related work. Um, the counter, uh, the deterministic counterpart of all our applications are kind of well studied. There are constant approximation known uh, for this problem. And uh, there are also some stochastic uh, combinatorial optimization problems studied before, like the knapsack problem, beam packing problem, and the load balancing problem on different sighting, uh, on identical machines, uh, analytical machines, and the uh, LQ norm objective. In this work, we have some idea borrowed from uh, built on this uh, load balancing problem, uh, mainly the deterministic surrogate used there and also some way of forming the air relaxation. Um, okay, uh, a natural way to design stochastic optimization algorithm for combinatorial optimization problem is to replace the random variable by some deterministic value and then solving the resulting deterministic problem with uh, some known algorithm and then using the same solution for the stochastic problem. 
Um, I want to mention that the previous naive approach also follows this uh, roadmap and uh, kind of one of the most important part to apply this approach is to find a good uh, deterministic surrogate for the problem. So in this work, we use the effective size, uh, which is a function based on moment generating function. And uh, it is also used in the previous load balancing work. This is the definition for effective size. It is basically a weighted order of the log uh, moment generating function. It is defined for random uh, variable x with uh, integer parameter k. The k appears both as the weight and as a uh, normalization factor. So we want to use this effective size mainly because this uh, useful property um, intuitively, it means that if we can control the effective size in some way, then um, it can lead to a bounded uh, expected mixed band. For load balancing problem on identical machine, this property itself is enough for a constant approximation. Um, the main difference here is uh, in load balancing problem, each job will only load one machine, but in uh, the interval selection setting, each interval can load um, multiple points, and so we need a more uh, other approach to handle this setting. So here is a uh, outline of our algorithm. We will first find the linear inequality based on effective size, and then we will formulate our relaxation based on these valid inequalities. Uh, the LP will have exponential size, and uh, so it can only be uh, solved in polynomial time with uh, ellipsoid method and some separation oracle. And then we will have a running algorithm to reduce the fractional solution given by the LP relaxation to some deterministic instance and uh, call the deterministic algorithm there. So in the remaining part of this talk, I will assume the, uh, we know that the optimal objective value is one uh, after normalization. This can be achieved by a uh, standard uh, <coughs> binary search procedure. We also um, kind of deal with the random variable separately into two categories. We call them truncated random variable and exceptional random variable. Truncated random variables are those with realizations less than the optimal objective value. And the exceptional one is the realizations that's larger than the optimal objective value. We want to separate these two candidates. They cannot behave uh, very differently, uh, especially for the tail performance. Uh, and the exceptional random variable is kind of large. So it's, in other words, easier to handle because we cannot afford to have any of them become large. Here are the value inequality we got from uh, effective size. So uh, the idea is um, if we choose any interval subset S, which is like a green part here, if it's expected uh, mixed band is less than one, then for any possible point subset K, for example, right one here, if we only consider the intervals that has some load on k, its beta k value with respect to the truncated part has be bounded by a constant number times the size of the subset. And this is true for all the possible interval subset and all the possible uh, work, uh, point subset. So based on this value in quality, we have this LP relaxation. The variable yg is whether uh, to choose interval j in the solution. Uh, here, we ignore the exceptional random variables because uh, they are kind of easier to handle. We only need to bound this L1 norm for all of them. So uh, we, got, we ignore it in this talk. The first thing in quality, just say we have to choose at least t intervals. And the second constraint is corresponding to the previous value in quality. We have for every possible subset, uh, the beta k value is bounded. Uh, note that we have exponential number of constraints here, uh, so we need a sorry, we need a separation oracle to solve it. 
we called a maximum coverage subproblem as a separation oracle, so we cannot solve this LP to optimal, um, but there will only a constant factor loss in this solving part, so we kind of ignore it. Uh, I also want to mention that uh, this LP is just a feasibility LP. Uh, we're guessing the optimal value, and we only want to check if the LP can return any feasible solution, or it can get a certificate to show it's infeasible. Given our fractional solution returned by the LP, we will uh, have the running algorithm. I will use an example to illustrate how this running algorithm work. So it is an iterative approach. In each iteration, we will form a subset of intervals and the points, satisfies a particular property, which are easy to handle separately and then combine them over the intervals. So from the uh, LP constraint, the kind of violent inequality, we know that every point will have a beta two effective size at most two B. So in the first iteration, we are interested in those points with beta B square effective size larger than two B. Uh, for example, if this point has this property, then we will move is this prop uh, this point and all the interval has load on this points to the iteration one list. And uh, also, we also check if there is another point satisfy this condition, we also remove it to iteration one list, and so on. Then after iteration one, we know that every point remains has beta two square load at most two B. So we start iteration two and are interested in those points with property that their beta cube value larger than uh, two B. So see these points, these points, and these points satisfy this condition. They will form the iteration two points, and they are, and any interval have load on these points will form the iteration two intervals. So after iteration two, we know every point will have beta uh, beta cube. Effective size load at most 2B, so we started to look at beta uh, two to the fourth load. So basically, in general, in iteration I, due to the terminated condition in I minus one iteration, uh, if we set K equal to two to the two to the L, all the points remain will have beta K value less than 2B, and we will be interested in those points with beta K square load larger than 2B. Here is the key property we got from the rounding. So first, since we uh, square the uh, effective size parameter and the largest it can be is m, so the total number of iteration is log log m. And then when the beta size is less than 2b, it's easy to bound the mixed band. So for any iteration l, let k equal to two to the two to the l as before then we know that it's beta k value less than less than 2b and the beta square value larger than 2b due to our value uh, due to the inequality in the LP, there are at most k square points uh, can satisfy this condition. So there are at most k square points in iteration L. We will call the deterministic algorithm on each uh, level, uh, on each, in, on each iteration List separately and got the solution from there. So for the rounding solution, uh, we will have for each iteration list itself, the maximum load on the iteration L points is at most one. Then we want to have a general bound on any points. We will use the interval structure here. So if we only consider the iteration L intervals, uh, so it shows as here, uh, remember that iteration L intervals will have load on at least one iteration L points. Iteration L points is marked as red here. Then consider any points um, of interest. For example, this black point. Then we can choose the uh, most close point in the iteration L set to its left and right. So in this where any iteration L intervals that have load on this black point will have, have to at least pass one of these red points. 
So the load on this black point will be bounded by the sum of these two red points. Or uh, loosely speaking, any points will be at most two times the maximum load on iteration L points. So we have a two factor here. Then we know that uh, we have log log m iterations, a union bound of all these um, iterations will give a log log m approximation. So this is the work we have for the interval selection problem. And uh, in the more general set system, we call this problem gym mix band. The instance of this problem is still with points and uh, uh, drops. Each instance will have n drops corresponding to the interval before and n points. And uh, also each size of the points is a random variable xj and we want to uh, minimize the expected mix span and requiring select t of the drops. Again, we use li to denote that all the drops that use point g. Uh, here is another here is an example of another application, the rectangle packing problem. Uh, the idea is uh, given a set of rectangles in a plane. Each of them has a random size. We want to pick t of them to minimize uh, the load on any point in the plane. So although this plane should have infinite points, but uh, since there are only n rectangles, there are at most polynomial size of n different combinations. So the size of the job, uh, sorry, the uh, size of the points will be polynomial of n and the log log of that is reduced to log log n. For general size system, we require two property to be true um, to allow our algorithm work. The first property is the alpha pack ball property. Um, so we require there exists some deterministic algorithm for this problem. For the deterministic instance, uh, it's slightly different from the stochastic instance. Besides a size sj for each drop, we also have a reward rj. And uh, uh, instead of the target number t, we have a uh, bound on the mixed band theta. So the problem becomes to maximize the total reward we collect without violating the mixed band bound. And alpha is corresponding to the integrality gap of this problem. And the second, uh, okay. And uh, as mentioned before, for our work, all the applications, we have alpha equal to constant. There are constant approximation deterministic algorithm known. The second property we have uh, required is, uh, we call it lambda safety, is used in the rounding step where, uh, so in the interval selection property, a problem, it is the step where we use two points in the iteration L uh, point list to bound the mixed band of all the, <coughs> to bound the load on any point. Formally, we see there, if we have a subset D of the inverse point, if you have a superset M, marked points of it, and M has to be at most polynomial size of D. Then for each point I, uh, there is a subset Ri from M, such that the load, if we only consider the drops have load on the D points, then uh, every drop incident to I will also have incident to at least one point in the Rj subset, uh, Ri subset. So let me uh, still using the interval selection problem to describe this property. So in that uh, application, we actually have m equal to d and it's marked as the uh, right region here. And then we only consider the interval has at least uh, some load on one of the m points. If we are interested in the load of the blue points, Again, we can choose the left close point of the red side and the red close point. Any point, uh, any interval that have load on the blue point will have load on at least one of the red point. So in the uh, interval sighting 
the each uh, ri will have size at most two. We say this property is lambda safe and the lambda is referred to the maximum size of the ri subset. So here lambda will equal to two. Uh, in our application, we have lambda for constant for uh, passing three rectangle in play and flat objective in play. Our general result is if we have a set system satisfies the above two property with uh, factor alpha and lambda, then the overall approximation ratio will be uh, alpha lambda log log m. And uh, uh, at the last part, I want to briefly mention the limitation of our uh, LP relaxation. So uh, the previous similar LP relaxation achieved a constant approximation for the load balancing problem. Uh, but here we show the LP relaxation is somehow not strong enough in that, in that sense. In the interval, set, interval selection problem, we show a log star m integrated gap for uh, this setting. By this uh, instance, uh, the idea is we have roughly a binary tree structure. We have two to the h points and uh, h level of interval. In each level, uh, the interval will be just a union of two interval from the lower level. And this uh, example allows us to show a log star m interleague gap for the interval selection problem. For more general set system, we show that if we do not have the lambda safe property, the LP relaxation will have a log m over log log m square integrality gap, even if the deterministic algorithm only have an integrality gap of two. Uh, this means, um, so if we want to achieve something non-trivial from the LP relaxation, we need some geometric structure in the set system. So uh, let me briefly conclude this work. So we got a log log m approximation for stochastic mix span minimization in some geometric set system, including uh, intervals in lines, fat objective in plane, uh, trees. So some open question includes, uh, first is to see if this LP can actually achieve the log star uh, lower bound for interval selection problem. And uh, for more general, uh, if there is constant approximation or any hardness results, we can establish for this uh, set of problem. Thank you. Thank you for the nice talk. Before we start with uh, with the questions, we have some time. Uh, let me quickly announce that Neil Oda wants to make an announcement after this and ask me to ask you to stick around instead of leaving. So uh, with that out of the way, so maybe we can start the questions. Are there any questions in the uh, in the audience? So maybe I can start with one. Uh, so the. Um, uh, the, the covering version of this, so interval covering, stochastic interval covering, have you, uh, have you thought about that at all? Um, I I don't think we really think about that. But it can be I mean, there is some there is some parallel work to uh, uh, the work by Jacory et al. on packing for covering. So I I, th I thought it's natural. Okay, thank you. More questions. Is there any intuition for like how do you get this log star m integrality gap like, that you can quickly tell us? Um. So the 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 kind of. Intuition is somehow uh, if we require to select um, all the points in this set, in this set, then um, basically the tail performance of this uh, random variable is become significant. And if we for any uh, root leaf pass, there are enough random variable to pack, and there are enough uh, different paths. Uh, so at least one of them will become large enough to. Uh, go beyond constant. Uh, I don't know if it's a 
well, enough description for the intuition, but basically we achieve, basically we achieve uh, enough number of random variables. I see. Uh, what are the sizes of these? These. Uh, each uh, in each uh, each level, uh, the size will be two. Uh, it will be a Bernoulli random variable with size either zero or two to the minus d. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. More questions. If not, maybe we can conclude the section uh, and uh, thank the two speakers again.